What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Guys, we're going to go ahead and do a preview of the Indianapolis Colts versus the Dallas Cowboys, which is coming up on Sunday night. A couple of quick things here, guys. Thank you guys so much again for all the support on the channel. Greatly appreciate it. So close to 15,000 subscribers, guys. So we're, let's push for that. We're so close. Uh, also, by the way, I will be at the uh, Colts Cowboys game on Sunday. So um, do me a, uh, do me a favor, and I will be doing some vlog content. Uh, so just keep an eye out for that. We should have that up uh, early in the week after that. But uh, just keep an eye out for that. And if you are going to the game somehow on that day, uh, feel free to shoot me a message on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And uh, let me know because uh, I would love to meet some people if I can definitely do that. Uh, so like I said, I'm going to have vlog content. If any of you guys want to shout me out, please let me know. Uh, I'll, I'll say hi to people. And so keep an eye out for those videos. Uh, but anyways, guys, going into this game, uh, this was a game that during the off season, when I looked at this opportunity, I said, I really think the Colts have a good shot of winning this game, uh, in the off season, because, you know, Dallas from what we saw last year was not a very solid team. Like they were okay, but there were times where obviously their defense last year was nothing like what it is now. Nothing. Um, and from an offensive standpoint, they have been able to run the football much more efficiently. So they are moving things a lot better now. Uh, so a much different opinion of this Dallas team now versus what I had for them in the off season. So just going into it from an offensive perspective, you know, Dak Prescott over the last few weeks, you know, hasn't hasn't done anything spectacular. Ten touchdowns to six interceptions. You know, he hasn't uh, in the six games that he has played. You know, hasn't done anything spectacular. Uh, nothing that really pops off the screen. But you know, Dak just still does make those decent throws. So that is going to be something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. And this passing game for uh, the Dallas Cowboys. You know, you really need to take advantage of the fact that their biggest weapon is CD by a long shot. Uh, overwhelming favoritism towards CD Lamb, who has been available for everything. And he's had 104 targets this year. So uh, 64 receptions on the year, all pretty much doubling the next uh, highest reception total in Dalton Schultz, their tight end. So you know, you really want to try to make sure you're focusing on CD Lamb with, you know, Stephon Gilmore and having a safety over the top as well. But the biggest issue with this, with covering this Cowboys team on offense is their rushing attack. Uh, this year, Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott, both with pr pretty much the same amount of carries, but Elliott is only averaging four yards per carry on 140 rushes. But Pollard is averaging five and a half carries on the same amount of rushes. He has 760 yards on the year with 136 uh, rushes. So Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott have combined for 13 touchdowns. Pollard is mainly the guy that gets a lot of the rushes in the middle of the field. And Ezekiel Elliott gets it in the red zone a lot more times. And he's the big uh, the punch guy, right? He's the one that delivers that power on the inside. So Ezekiel Elliott is definitely going to be a concern. Uh, Tony Pollard is definitely a concern because, you know, Indianapolis, while this defense has definitely been good, especially from a uh, passing perspective, they definitely have struggled over the last few weeks of stopping the run. Uh, the, the Colts offense doesn't give up a ton of big runs, but they are giving up 100-plus yards in a lot of their games in the rushing, the way that they're handling it. Early in games, they seem to get it, but then as the time goes on, because the offense doesn't get off the field enough, the defense gets really tired, and then they end up you know, getting uh, 
they end up getting punched in the mouth a lot. And that's what definitely concerns me about this upcoming game against Dallas is, you know, their ability to run the football. And even though we have a solid front, do not understand if uh, we're going to be able to actually slow down Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott. That's going to be the biggest question mark going into this game. Now, looking at it from the opposite side of things, this is probably the probably the scariest matchup that the Colts have had all season when it comes to defenses. Uh, from an overall defensive rankings perspective, Dallas has a top five defense. Uh, their rushing defense is not fantastic, but it's kind of the similar to ours. But you know, from a passing perspective, they might be the best, if not, uh, if one of the best, if not the best pass defending defense in the league. Uh, and that says a lot because Indy's up there in the top seven when it comes to that. And the Eagles were right there too. But I mean, what this team can do from a passing perspective, they, they gain a lot of pressure on players, right? They have four defensive linemen who have had at least five sacks this year. And I mean, they've had what in grand total have had 45 sacks, 12 of them coming off of Micah Parsons, who is, you know, by all means, you know, one of the most electrifying defensive players in the NFL right now. And it, I think he's what second or third in total sacks on the year only behind Judon and maybe Nick Bosa, uh, very close between him and Nick Bosa right now. But, I mean, Micah Parsons is very scary because Micah is such an athletic guy. You can line him up anywhere on this uh, offensive line and, you know, know he's going to gain pressure wherever he they put him. So they can line him up on Bernard. They can line him up on Will Fries. They can line him up on Braden Smith. They throw him anywhere. They throw him in at, at, at shooting A-gaps, right? Like, that's what he does. That is uh, that is a guy that is going to be very difficult to stop. Uh, the Colts did a primarily good job of limiting TJ Watt. I hope they can have similar success going up against Micah Parsons in this defensive line because Dorrance Armstrong... Their other defensive end, they got they got he has eight sacks. Demarcus Lawrence, six sacks on the year. He's been a more stable foundation for them now. Uh Dante Fowler Jr., who they brought in late, um, or brought in in the offseason, he's had five. You know, so they, these guys have these guys have played really well uh at generating pressure. And for an offensive line that is definitely trying to gain momentum now. Yeah, that's a very scary thought of what this defense can do. And then, you know, we talked about their linebackers, right? I mean, Leighton Vander Esch has definitely become a much more uh, overall better linebacker in both the run and the pass. He has 75 tackles on the year. So, you know, he's been a lot more efficient in how they're handling things. Their safeties are always involved in tackles. So, you know, they're they're involved in a lot of different things. And I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the the safeties as well and the corners, right? This secondary for them has been phenomenal, right? Trayvon Diggs has been locked down this year. Last year, I know a lot of people like to mention, oh, he had the turnovers, but he gave up a lot of yardage to get those, right? But this year, he's been a lot more locked down, a lot more locked down. So it's been very concerning to uh, see that he's gotten much better. And former Indianapolis Colt Malik Hooker has had some time in. Um, and it's been a situation where, and even Jordan Lewis has had times where he's played good. I don't remember if he's playing or not, but Anthony Brown has come in and he's had some good plays. You know, he's had a lot of pass deflections this year. So overall as a defense, they don't give up a lot of big plays, right? Their their defense has been top five easy. And that's concerning with an offense that has been only averaging 16, uh, 16 points per game. So, I mean, if we couldn't expect the Colts to really score on Pittsburgh, 
I don't see how the Colts do this going to AT&T Stadium and doing that, right? And, you know, the special teams units for the Cowboys has done really well. They're coached really well. So I'm very nervous for this game, guys. Very nervous. Um, They have a shot at winning this, of course. Anyone has a chance if you catch somebody on a bad night. But what we have seen from this Indianapolis Colts team especially offensively when you're going up against a top five defense this week. I just don't know how we're going to respond to the fact that we're facing an elite defense like this. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments on what you think is going to happen with this game. Uh, Feel free to shoot that in the comments. Again, thank you guys so much for the continued support. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, go Colts. What's going on, everybody? Today, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, BetStamp. Now, I know what you're thinking. Derek, another betting app? What is so different about this one now? Well, I got to tell you guys, I'm not into online gambling a whole lot and bets online and everything, but I got to tell you, BetStamp is one of the coolest things I have ever seen in regards to betting online. The great thing about BetStamp is it allows you to see all the different odds from all different sports books and see which one provides you the best odds possible for any game or scenario you want to bet on for your pick versus some of the worst. BetStamp allows you to also buy and sell picks that you have without worrying about losing your money or having any issues with it. Believe me, it's all free. I mean, look at this, guys. You have an option for every game across all different kinds of leagues. In a ton of different ways. You have baseball, you have college football, UFC, NBA, and NFL. Great for the NFL season now being here. And if I wanted to bet on this Tennessee Titans versus Buffalo Bills game, it shows me in real time what are the best odds, which sports book I'm going to get the best offer from versus some of the worst ones. Because why would you want to spend what get earn less money from points bet when you could be winning more from ProLine Plus? Again, a great thing that BetStamp offers you, allowing you to make more money for the same pick just with a different sports book. How easy is that? And the great thing is, is there's not just games. There's player props. There's game props. There's lines. There's live tracking. There's a ton of great ways to make bets and picks on BetStamp, guys. Totally a cool thing to use. I highly encourage you check it out if you're into any kind of online betting. Even if you're not, give it a check. See what you like about it because I think I actually enjoy using it. But the best way to get an edge on online sports betting is having multiple accounts at different sports books. Be sure to hit the bet link page, betstamp.app slash onboarding. Be sure to check out the betstamp app app or online and be sure to use the referral code juice plug in your state and you'll get access to all their affiliates and their prices once you open up seeing all states lines be sure to check this out guys you won't want to miss it for the best odds on your next sports bet